It's a great honor to be here. Uh, it was also uh, a, a great expedition to come here. <laughs> um, we walked the last part of the tour from the, uh, from the airport. Um, and I realized myself that I'm in the heart of the Industrial Revolution. It started somewhere here in the area, uh, uh, maybe a little bit more west, but uh, uh, this part of England is the start of the Industrial Revolution. But we are, on the, are now on the end of the Industrial Revolution. We are facing a new era. And like the Stone Age, it was not because of the lack of stone that the Stone Age ended. <laughs> it is because we started to think better and more, and in a different way. And this is what we are facing now also. We have to get out of the Industrial Revolution and into a new revolution. And maybe it's a cradle-to-cradle -cradle revolution, maybe it's a biomimicry revolution, I don't know what it's called. But it probably will be a new kind of economy and a new kind of product development. But never forget what we already have. We won't throw it away. Uh, so I will take you along uh, in some of the experiences that we have in the Netherlands on working on cradle-to-cradle. I'm not a native English speaker, so sometimes I have to search for a word, but uh, probably, uh, I hope at least that you will understand what I'm trying to tell you. Um, some of the experience in the Netherlands. And I will give you a brief history, but uh, one of the main points of the development was a discussion with our Minister of Environment, Mrs. Jacqueline Kramer, with whom I had a discussion on uh, is cradle to cradle something we should work on? I think we should at least find out what is worse for us. Uh, and she was a, a good uh, environmental professor, so she was also the one who I would have asked, even when she was not a, a minister, is cradle to cradle something to work on? Um, and she organized a few small discussions uh, in her office uh, just to find out whether cradle to cradle is really the new way to go. And she had two conclusions. The one was, the first one was, yes, it's the next step in our thinking. And the other one was, and we can do it because we have the knowledge from all the other ways of looking at the environment. And when we can combine these two ways of thinking, we will get a major step further. Um, but then, that's beautiful said, of course, but what is the next step? Uh, is that the next step in just getting even a little bit more smart in environmental policies? Uh, or do we need to, uh, another way of thinking? And when you look at history of environmental policies, uh, we started with a kind of inward view. Uh, the first environmental policies were because I got sick, because my neighbor made something that made me sick, and we had to do something about that. Uh, so it was a quite direct relation and uh, 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 very personal. Um, but we are now at, a, at an era that we can see what our effects of our work globally are. So this is the first change. We know and we can see more than we could. And the other one is um, starting quite unprepared, just telling my neighbor he needs to do something else to a way of thinking of how can we change the world, how can we uh, change our way of thinking and our relation to our surroundings, a more mature way of looking around. So when you look at cradle to cradle uh, and put it in uh, uh, these two elements, then you can say, well, we did a lot of work on uh, environmental policies. Uh, and eco-efficiency was just about the last one in the Netherlands. Uh, and cradle to cradle is just the next step. And uh, probably there will be another next step. But cradle to cradle is no more than the next step in our thinking. Um, well, I'm not going in further. Uh, it's just the, the idea of making a next step. What did I do? I did the wrong. So when you look at history in the Netherlands, on cradle to cradle, the major event was at first the documentary on our national television, public broadcast. Uh, 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 um, 
and this this documentary waste is food elaborated us with the ideas of cradle to cradle interviews with michael browngard and william mcdonough they went to the ford factory uh, to see what's going on there uh, and a lot of other companies just to see what's going on and this documentary had a huge impact in the netherlands we still don't know why but probably it was the right moment with the right message it was uh, uh, just uh, let's say six months after al gore uh, came along with his uh, um, um, depromising, is that a, an English word? Uh, uh, his message was not too... Uh, uh, yeah, dep depressing uh, message. Thank you. Um, uh, and Cradle to Cradle brings something new and gave people uh, the idea, yes, we can do something. Um, and this public broadcast, it even was so well seen that on birthday parties with my neighbors, I could talk about it because people had seen it, um, which is quite special on such kind of the, uh, documentary. That was the first thing that happened. Uh, a lawyer in the south of the Netherlands thought, this is the idea. And what he did by his own was start the idea, I, I need to bring all these people together who want to work on it. So we organized a huge conference he was our Alan, uh, maybe, uh, but he had 600 people uh, uh, together. Um, this was a huge conference, and our minister also came there and said, we are going to work on credit to credit. And she said more than she could tell in The, ha in, uh, in, uh, in the Hague. Uh, but OK, we heard it, and we were uh, invited to start working on it. Um, and I was at that moment uh, working at the Prime Minister's office in a group that worked on sustainable development. So we also had some yeah, possibilities to have discussions over there on uh, the issue of credit to cradle. And this all brought us to uh, the discussion with the minister and the question of the minister. Uh, she phoned me uh, uh, during the summer period and she said, Darian, I need you because I need someone within my ministry to tell my people what cradle to cradle is. And I had to think just about three seconds and I said, well, this is very uh, nice that you ask me this, but I won't do it. Um, it's probably the first uh, official that uh, said to the minister, I won't do it. Um, because I don't want to work within a ministry. I do want to work in government, around government, with companies, with people from outside, and bring the relations. Uh, so we started, in the end, it became an enhancement team. Uh, in Dutch, it sounds a little bit better, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> the A team, uh, it's a kind of eight, a small A team, just two people working on Cradle to Cradle, with a very small budget, uh, but we had the uh, the authority of the minister to do anything we want. And that was very good because that made uh, creativity in our way of working. Um, so let's just take a little bit back. What is Cradle to Cradle about? Of course, it's about getting quality. It's getting <coughs> new quality. And uh, the last speaker on biomimicry showed us quite a few examples of how we can get new qualities. And find it. Uh, it's also about effectiveness. I don't know whether you have all heard Michael Browngart on Cradle to Cradle, but he makes a difference between effectiveness and efficiency. We all work on efficiency, use a little bit less, that's big, a little bit less damage, but that's not very effective. We need to do things that makes uh, 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 things better. Let's make things really better. Um, it's about material management. Never use materials for one time. <coughs> Always use them in a way that you can reuse them again on the same quality level. Um, it's also about partnerships. You need to make new connections with people who make, have new ideas, who have other ideas about the way it works. Um, and very special is the idea whatever you do as a human, add value to your surrounding. Add value to the quality of life. 
and start thinking about that. And this was the issue that I heard when the fir I had the first meeting uh, on this uh, uh, Cradle to Cradle uh, with the, the guys who made the documentary. And then I was in the train back home, and then I'm traveling through the midst of the Netherlands. And I was looking outside, and I thought, they are right. This is the area that we dug out completely 200 years ago, and now is one of our most beautiful natural national landscapes. It's a national park. Uh, but that's a quality that we made. We didn't do it um, uh, with, with uh, uh, conscious. It was an unconscious effect of what we did. But when we can turn it around and be conscious of the value that we can add to nature or our surrounding, then we have new quality in our work. Um, so, basically, it's a positive approach. It's not about doing things not. It's about how to perform things in a way that you add quality to your surroundings. Well, um, then the, the Dutch policies. Uh, just a little bit of the context. Uh, as I told you, we had very good environmental laws. And we still have. This is a, a, a keen set, a good set of uh, environmental uh, laws and regulations. And we didn't want to have more of them. Uh, for safety issues, it's OK at the moment. And we will not get the politicians so far that we uh, can get even more environmental laws. So the whole set is quite adequate. Uh, but then the other one is, uh, we are quite tired in the Netherlands <coughs> of the hammer strategy that from the environmental point of view has been used in the last 20 years. That you do your light out. Don't take a shower longer than <laughs> four minutes. Uh, don't use your car when you want to go somewhere. Don't, 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 don't. Do less, do less, do less. Uh, and we're so tired of it. Um, and people don't react anymore. Yes, the 10% of the people that do want to hear that message do react. But we need to have the other 90% also. So uh, we're quite tired of this way of hammering that you should change your lifestyle. People don't want to change their lifestyles. Uh, how, how many times did you change your lifestyle because of the communication by government? <laughs> you don't. So we are looking for the real transition. And there's a difference in our way of looking at transition uh, uh, as what in uh, England is uh, transition towns. And uh, the basic idea is just about the same. But we see transitions as fundamental changes in society that have a technology drive and a social drive. Um, so what you need is uh, systems innovation. Uh, and it takes a long time. For instance, to get this country from a smoking country to a non-smoking country, it probably took about 30 years of talking and discussing and whatever. Uh, and now it's, it's, it's there, at least. Uh, you cannot smoke anymore in public buildings. And so on. That took us 30 years. And when we wait 30 years, uh, the CO2 problem or the energy problem probably will be solved also. Uh, but we don't want to wait 30 years. We want to speed it up. So what we want to do is to bring it in transition, to speed